Welcome to the Daily Reminder Network. Sunnah Revival by Sheikh Mu'iz Bukhari Sunan Relating to Ramadan, Part 1 Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dear all, this is Mu'iz Bukhari, recording for the Daily Reminder Network. Alhamdulillah, we have attained the blessed month of Ramadan, and we thank Allah Azza wa Jal for this great blessing. And we pray to Him subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us make the best out of this month. For today's episode, inshallah ta'ala, I will be focusing on a few important sunnah and etiquettes regarding the virtuous month of Ramadan. So etiquette number one is that we can eat and drink as much as we want for sahur and iftar, that which is halal obviously, but we should take a lot of precaution not to waste food. Because at times you see families cook a variety of food for sahur and iftar, and most of that food goes to waste. We should not be from the musrifun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Noble Quran, وَلَا تُسْرِفُوا إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُسْرِفِينَ And waste not, verily he, our maker, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, likes not al-musrifun, those who waste. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all to stay away from wasting food. The next action item is a great sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and that is sahur, which is a light pre-dawn meal. The Prophet ﷺ attached a lot of importance to this pre-dawn meal and we should not think of it as something insignificant and sleep through it. Some people find it difficult to drag themselves out of bed and eat at that time. But you will find it a lot easier if you do wake up a bit earlier, involve yourself in the recitation of the Quran, prayers and dua, instead of waking up last minute and trying to stuff ourselves with food and drink before the Adhan ends. The Prophet is reported to have said, the narration is recorded in the book of Imam Bukhari and Imam Muslim, partake of the sahur, for in that sahur, for in the pre-dawn meal, there is barakah, there is blessing. And also according to the sunnah of the Prophet is that the pre-dawn meal should be delayed and consumed closer to the adhan of Fajr. The Sahaba Ta'ala they state, and this particular narration is recorded in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, we ate sahur with Rasulullah then he got up to pray. And the time between the adhan, between the call for Salat al-Fajr and his sahur, was the time it would take an individual to read 50 ayat, to read 50 verses of the Noble Quran. The next sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ is to hasten to break one's fast no sooner one hears the adhan for Salat al -Madhri. Now a question generally posed is that which is more important, repeating the words of the adhan after the muaddin or hastening to break one's fast? The scholars have differed concerning the ruling on repeating after the Muaddin and repeating the words of the Adhan. And the more favorable view, which is the view of the majority of the scholars, is that repeating it is mustahab, preferable, not obligatory. But we do notice people who give a lot of preference to repeating the words of the Adhan so much to the extent that they delay the breaking of their fast until the Adhan is over. Thereby missing out on a sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, which is to hasten to break one's fast. So based on what we put forth, we can arrive at a conclusion that there is no conflict between hastening to break the fast and repeating the words of the Mu'addis. As the fasting person can hasten to break his fast as soon as the sun has set and as soon as he hears the Adhan, and at the same time, he can repeat the words of the Mu'addis whilst eating or drinking thereby attaining both virtues, the virtue of hastening to break the fast and the virtue of repeating the words of the Mu'addin in Shah The next sunnah in line in regard to breaking the fast is to break one's fast with fresh dates. If fresh dates are not available, then dry dates. And if dry dates are not available, then with water. This is based on the hadith of Anas which has been recorded in the book of Imam Abu Dawud and Imam Tirmidhi who is reported to have said that Rasulullah used to break his fast with fresh dates before praying. And if there were no fresh dates, then he would break his fast with dry dates. And if there were no dry dates, then he would take a few sips of water. Moving on, in regard to specific du'as that are supposed to be read during sahur and iftar. 
Now, in regard to sahur, of course, there aren't any specific du'as to be said at that time that have been taught to us by Rasulullah wasallam. Rather, what is prescribed is to say Bismillah at the beginning and to praise Allah when one concludes eating, as should be done at every meal. But in regard to breaking fast, the Prophet wasallam used to say, and this narration is recorded in the book of Imam Abu Dawud, ذَهَبَ الْضَمَعْ وَبِتَلَّتِ الْعُرُوقِ وَتَبَتَ الْأَجْرِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ Beautiful du'a. ذَهَبَ الْضَمَعْ وَبِتَلَّتِ الْعُرُوقِ وَتَبَتَ الْأَجْرِ إِنْ شَاءَ اللَّهِ The translation of the du'a is, the thirst has gone. ذَهَبَ الْضَمَعْ The thirst has gone. The wains have been moistened and the reward is assured if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills. There are of course other du'as that have been reported as well that can be read and one may also read whatever du'a, general du'a one wants as it is after a noble deed of fasting which is very very dear to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we believers should try to make as much du'a as possible during the time of sahur and iftar, supplicating and knocking on the door of our maker throughout this noble month. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasts, accept our good deeds during this blessed month, and may Ni Azza wa Jal help us all to make the best out of this month. Please don't forget to share this video around as much as possible to inspire an amazing Sunnah revival. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Support the Dawah. Donate now. Go to thedailyreminder.org slash donate.